Happy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome to another study in our Friday night Bible study. Uh, what a week it has been. A very interesting week, very eventful week, and so much so that I'll be doing a special edition of our Friday night Bible, Bible study. We have been following the book of Daniel. But since it's a Sabbath school lesson, I'm going to put that on hold until tomorrow morning at about 7 a.m. I'll be doing um, a study on the book of Daniel or Daniel chapter 10. But tonight I want to respond um, as it is, has the world's attention. We have to respond and to address some important matters about the world in crisis at this time. All right, so I'm just waiting, um, giving opportunity for some of you to come on as we study this evening. Well, when I say happy Sabbath to those of you who are joining, happy Sabbath, Shereen, happy Sabbath, my uncle, Noel, glad to have you, sir. Happy Sabbath, Rene, Sister Francis, happy Sabbath, Sister Williams, brother Winston Keen, brother Bonner. Happy Sabbath and welcome. We're going to have a very important discussion this evening, so um, please take your Bible and let's come on. My sister-in-law, Charlene, happy Sabbath to you and welcome. Um, you know, I've had to address this word several times in my experience. Pastor Ellis, happy Sabbath, sir. Happy Sabbath, Brother Hayden. Welcome, Abby Sabbath, Sister Cindy Williams. Glad to have you um, online. Abby Sabbath, Sarah McLean, Nesita Rose. Welcome. Grab your Bible and let's 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 um have a very special study this evening. Now the dictionary. The dictionary defines a crisis. This way, it says a crisis is a time of intense difficulty or danger. Abi Sabbath Ann Nemard, Alison Garden, Vivian Cooper from Old Road, Abi Sabbath, Alethea Brown, Wellington, and Karim Russell. A time of intense difficulty and danger. And as I was discussing, discussing with my family this, e this evening, um, there are times when, as individuals, we go through crisis. You know, you may lose a loved one, you fall out of a relationship, um, you lose your job. That's a crisis for an individual. You um, come to a crossroad. You are diagnosed with a terminal illness or with a serious illness. As an individual, you go through crisis. And a crisis is, a, is normally a situation that interrupts the usual course of operation. Your life is not the same. And it shows us how vulnerable we are. Welcome, Sister Joy Bailey and Lisa Sterling. Happy Sabbath to you. Alicia McCoy, glad to have you. Then, then a family can also go through a crisis together. As in the end of 2017, my family and I, we went through a crisis for a couple of weeks, several weeks and months. As a family, your, your life is interrupted. As a church, we do face crisis at times. You know, um, whether the Seminary Adventist Church you're a part of or other churches, we do face crisis. Happy Sabbath, Andre Hibbert. Glad to have you, sir. And then we have community or a country can face crisis. Um, Jamaica, before the coronavirus, was going through a crisis in terms of the violence that we face. We had to be implementing so many states of emergency to handle this crisis that our country was in. But for the past couple of weeks and months, I've observed, brothers and sisters, that the world is going through a crisis. 
with the coronavirus um, threatening to take over. The world is going through a crisis. And there are some persons who will suggest that, listen, man, we're just, this is just for a time. It's a nine-day wonder. We're going to move on. Let's, let's get back to normal. One thing you need to understand about a crisis is that when a crisis happens to you, whether as an individual or as a group, things may never get back to normal. Things may never get back to ordinary operations. And that's one thing we need to be aware of. Whether as an individual or as a group you face a crisis, don't ever take the approach to say, this is only happening for a time. We must be prepared. You may lose your freedom. You may lose your income. And thus, you may lose your economic status and some of your privileges. There are crises that have taken countries and communities where persons who were once in a financially good position lost that position and that status. And persons need to understand that. I'm not saying you must be afraid or be scared. I'm just saying that we need to put ourselves in crisis mode. And in crisis mode, it's not that you're anxious or worried. Welcome, Doreen. Time, I'm not sure where in the world you're joining from, but welcome, glad to have you. Silver and Reed and Crystal Griffiths. Happy Sabbath. So, um, I'm not, we're not saying this is not anxious mode or fear mode. This is crisis mode. And every family, every individual, every organization, most organizations do have a crisis plan. Our country, obviously, have a good crisis management plan. I must come in the, the, the Prime Minister, leadership of this country, both Prime Minister and Leader of Opposition, on, on the way they are managing this crisis. They are doing an excellent job. So I'm just trying to put things into perspective to understand that it is crisis that we are managing. And we need to understand that things might change. For example, right now the Prime Minister announced that the entire country is in is declared a disaster zone. And the folks in Bull Bay, that area is declared as a quarantine zone. All right? And so that's a crisis situation that we find ourselves in. And we need to brace ourselves for it. And Jesus, that's what I want to discuss with you tonight, Matthew 21. We, we normally use Matthew 24, but I like, Matthew, Luke, I, I like Luke 21 because Luke gives a non-Jewish perspective on what Jesus had to say. Because most of what Jesus said in Matthew 24 were a little embarrassing for the Jews. Because first of all, it starts out by, by, by in, a, in a situation like this, where disciples invited Jesus to take a look at the temple in Jerusalem. In Luke 20, 21, and Luke 21, reading verse 5, the Bible says, And as some speak of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, as for these things which you behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Welcome, my sister, Tricia. Glad to have you. So what, what, what Jesus was doing here, because the disciples were taking comfort. They were, they were, they were leaning on the, the the whole matter of having a beautiful city, Jerusalem, and, in, and taking comfort in the security of Jerusalem. And what Jesus said placed them in crisis mode. <laughs> Jesus said to them, listen, the time is coming when this beautiful temple that you're, you're glorying so much that you want to reject the Son of God over it. Because the, 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 the Pharisees said to Jesus, man, you know, basically, don't speak ill of this building. But Jesus said, the time is coming when, when, when not one stone will come upon another. So he put the disciples in crisis mode. So they asked him when they, when they got the chance, tell us, when shall these things be? 
and what shall be the sign of your coming and, and of the end of the world? When will these things come to pass, basically? And then Jesus began to outline Habe Sabbath Velma Scott. In this, in this prophecy, just as in Matthew 24, it's the same record, the same sermon, but two different accounts. Jesus gave an outline for two things. He gave the roadmap that would lead up to the destruction of Jerusalem, which was a major crisis in the life of the Jews. And then he gave the roadmap, and he, and he used that experience as an illustration or as an object lesson for the roadmap that leads up to his second coming. And so really what Jesus outlined here are a number of crisis situations that the disciples must prepare their minds for. Beginning with the, with the destruction of Jerusalem, he said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, because many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. After Jesus left the earth, there were many who rose up to say they are the Messiah. They are the chosen one, and they led many into rebellion against the Romans, and so on. He says, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. Those are crisis situations. When the world faced World War I and World War II, I wasn't there, but based on history, Many thought that these crises would bring the world to an end. But the Lord made sure to tell them, listen, when you hear of these things, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. I'm at verse 9. And then he says, because nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there will be great earthquakes. Those are crisis situations in, in, in Haiti in 2010. We had a major situation there. Um, we have pestilence and famine, fearful signs and great signs that shall, there, there shall be from the heavens. But those are not the only crises for the disciples. Habe Sabbat, um, Sister Scott German, Habe Sabbat, Shanta Davis. Jesus also told them, that you yourselves will be put in prison. You'll be persecuted. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You'll be brought before kings and rulers to testify of your faith. But he says, don't worry about these things. Crisis situation again, but don't worry about it. I'm going to see you through. And then he said to them, listen, you're going to face betrayal. Even parents and children will betray family members because of the gospel and for the gospel's sake. In matter of fact, he says, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he said to them in verse 18, well, this is why I like Luke's version, because Luke said, but there shall not one hear of your head perish. In your patience, possess ye your souls. And then he gave the disciples the ultimate sign and crisis situation that would bring the end to Jerusalem. He said to them, And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. In other words, uh, when Titus, the general for the Roman army, came in 66 AD, and surrounded Jerusalem, it was a sign for the disciples that they need to flee to the mountains. They need to get out of Jerusalem. And providence would have it that Titus came at first, but then he retreated for some reason. And that gave space for the Christians who listened to the words of Jesus to run for their lives into the mountains. And they did escape and offer truth. Not one Christian perished in the destruction of Jerusalem because they took heed to the words of Jesus. But then this um, experience of the destruction of Jerusalem, Jesus used it now. He blended the experience into bringing to the sign of, the, of his second coming. He said there are going to be distress of nations and, and, and a time of trouble such as no, never was. But then he says that Jerusalem 
will it be trodden on the foot, that's verse 24, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And to understand the times of the Gentiles and what it means, um, Abbe Sabbath Owen Brown, Abbe Sabbath Sister Jackson Henry, and Sister Shannon Robinson Pitkin, welcome. To understand what the time of the Gentiles meant or mean, you have to look at Revelation chapter 11 or Daniel chapter 8 that spoke with that period of time, that 1260 years when the sanctuary will be desecrated and so on. But the idea is that after these things, there are going to be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, which according to Matthew 24, we have already seen the fulfillment of these signs. And by the way, just like the earthquake, the wars, the pestilence, when these signs took place, the sun, moon, and stars, they too brought the world in crisis. When in, in 1780, when we had a dark day, everyone, where, 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 where on that day, the, the sun came out in the morning, but then by nine o'clock, the sun went down. When the sun went down. You're welcome, Owen and Abbe Sabah Shalan. And for the entire day, it was darkness upon the earth. And when the moon came up at 9 o'clock in the night, it had the appearance of blood. That was a sign that Jesus gave. And it had global impact in terms of persons thinking about the end of the world. The same thing with the falling of the stars. These things are signs that Jesus gave that would have worldwide impact and would bring about a crisis in the world. But he said to them in verse um, 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So in response to these signs, whether it is the earthquake, whether it is the wars and rumors of wars, whether it is pestilence or famine or, or the signs in the sun, moon, and stars, it is going to bring upon the earth fearfulness and distress. Okay? But for the Christian, Jesus said in verse 27, when you shall see this, um, when you shall see, the, and when these things begin to come to pass, verse 28, sorry, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, draw it nigh. You know, there are many persons who are shy to say that the, that the impact of the coronavirus is a sign of Christ's second coming. Don't be ashamed to say it. Jesus gave us the right to do that because he outlined the thing and showed us that when these things become to come to pass, it should be an, bring an awareness that we need to look up and lift up our heads for redemption right now. I am not an alarmist. I am a Bible-believing Christian. And this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And I'm not ashamed to identify it. What you have happening each time is that when these signs appear and they bring this euphoria and this fearfulness, as soon as it wears off, the world goes back into a stupor and say, well, we did tell you, you know, it's, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> you know, um, people use it as a thing to say, nothing will happen. See, I tell you, you know, these people were thinking the world is going to end. But guess what? And mark this, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not say that wars and rumors of wars are going to end the world. Jesus did not say that the coronavirus is going to end the world. He did not say that the world will end by a famine. He said these things are going to happen as a sign of the nearness of his coming. And as on the road to his coming, these things are going to happen. So how we are to respond to these signs is, as he says, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. And lift up your heads for your redemption joy at night. It's just like if I'm giving a directions to my home. I'm from Maroon Town, St. James. Right? And for some time the roads were very bad. Right? And so if I'm giving a directions to, to my house. 
there are some things I need to tell you. Because if you try to go there on your own, you might turn back before getting there. Because some parts of the roads are very bad. So I will tell you something like this. I say, listen, the road is not bad when you get to Magati and when you get from Magati to Ellersley. But as soon as you get to Ellersley, you're going to meet some tough and difficult roads. Don't turn back. Just continue and head to Flag Flamstead and head to Vaughansfield and you reach your destination. So Jesus is saying, when you see these things, they are part of the journey that will take you. But in the end, he says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. What this is saying to me, brothers and sisters, welcome Karen Reed, Adrian Osana Walker, welcome Thomas um, Amanda, welcome guys, God bless you, welcome my, my pastor Sadiq Beckford. What this is saying to me, brothers and sisters, is that as sure as you hear about wars and rumors of wars, as sure as you hear about earthquakes in diverse places, as sure as you hear about pestilence and coronavirus impacting the world and men's hearts failing them for fear, so sure will we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. In other words, these are not the end, but they are signs of the end. And the end that we are to look forward to is the coming of Jesus in the clouds of heaven. And don't miss that. Jesus is trying to give us these signs as an opportunity that the end will not miss us. That when we see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, we won't be unprepared. We won't be running to the rocks and to the mountains. But, by, but just like the disciples were prepared, that when they saw the army surrounding Jerusalem, they recognized that the, the, the destruction of Jerusalem is near, and so they fled to the mountains. What this says to me, brothers and sisters, is that as Christians, we must not get comfortable in this world. Because based on the words of Jesus, based on the road map that Jesus put there, we ought to expect people to try and deceive us. We ought to expect um, persecution. We ought to expect to face famine and earthquake and pestilence and year of wars and rumors of wars. We should not get comfortable. And that's why he said in verse 26, not verse 26, he says to them, um, be careful that your heart do not become overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and that they should take you unawares. So as Christians, in other words, remember I started out this presentation by talking about crisis. There are many of us as Christians, we're too comfortable. And many of us, you know, we just see coronavirus as interrupting our normal life and we, we, we can't wait to get back to normal. And we can't afford to lose certain privileges. Well, in a crisis, you can lose privileges. Your life will be interrupted. The last worldwide crisis we had besides the economic crisis of 2008-2009, was 9-11. Was and since that day, the world has never been the same. We can, we, can, we can do the same thing for us as individuals, as a church. When we face crisis, our lives are interrupted. There are some people who may face a crisis that may cripple them for the rest of their life. They can't walk. And they have to adjust to that situation. Some people may face a crisis of losing their eyesight. But in this case, in this particular case, brothers and sisters, this coronavirus crisis may see us never getting back to normal way of operation. Am I, am I an alarmist? No. 
is we are in crisis mode or we must think that way in job's experience his crisis was that he got sick and he had to face that what god will do is that he will give us a strength to go through these experiences one of the reasons we have betrayal and jesus did say that that parents will betray children and children parents is that people don't want to give up their comfort zone and so and so they will do anything to maintain that lifestyle that they have built up and that is why brothers and sisters i i i i'm trying to find the, the, this the verse that i still can't find i just i just quoted it from my head but jesus gave a stern warning about being overcome by the cares of this life many of us we call ourselves christian but we are busy with earning the dollar that's all we care about all we care about is that goal that mission that drive to accomplish our so-called ambitions now am i saying that you must have ambition as a christian no i have i have i have studied before and i'm and i'm and i'm still studying and i'm going to study to accomplish many things but in the end like abram god's people must recognize that this world is not our home and so we must not get comfortable like lot we must recognize that at any time this thing can come <laughs> that's how it started out in Matthew 24 the disciples were looking it, verse 34 thank you alifia yes thank you very much alifia it says and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares the apostle paul put it another way in second thessalonians that when no first thessalonians chapter 5 when they shall say peace and safety sun destruction come upon upon them i, I can't forget the, the sunday i was coming from probably a meeting or something and i came in to see that there was a um there was a special zone of operation right at my almost at my gate the, at the entrance to my community and i'm like wow that's what it's gonna happen that's what it's gonna happen brethren we have been we are here normally and we're gonna just hear it on the news that life has changed the world has changed again i'm not alarmist i'm just telling us brothers and sisters that as christians we must always be aware and be prepared live for jesus labor for him carry on his work but don't get too comfortable in this world because we already know how the story is going to end okay and that's why afterwards jesus gave a number of parables that we should use to help us in our preparation for the coming of jesus one of the parables well, there are many parables um the parable of the fig tree he says when you see the fig tree um putting on leaves you know that summer is near the same thing when you see these signs know that the coming of christ is near he gave the parable of the ten virgins five were wise five were foolish five were prepared but five were not ready when the announcement came behold the bridegroom cometh because god in his wisdom says that as much as we have the signs no man know the day nor the hour of his coming and so the best preparation is to be ready to be watching and working and being aware that this world is not our home make the best of life enjoy yourself but be ready for the second coming of jesus amen because if you notice the disciples were getting comfortable they were getting confident in jerusalem and his glory and the same thing is happening in our world today men are becoming comfortable in their space comfortable in their accomplishment in their achievement um china 
And I'm not China in, in China are God's people too. God loves the world, by the way, guys. I need you to understand this. God loves every single person on this planet. So we should not mark off some people as wicked and some people as righteous. But the point is, China was doing very well economically. Are we together? But in one moment of this thing arising, this pestilence arising, all of that wealth can go to naught. And the Bible does speak about this in Revelation chapter 18, where it says that the, 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 the wealth of the woman, I wonder if Alita can find the text for me, the wealth of the woman came to nothing in just one hour. The, 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 and, the, and the kings of the earth lament its destruction. So we must not get comfortable in this world. We are in crisis mode, the point is. And when these crises happen, they are an indicator that Christ is saying, wake up, saints. Wake up, guys. By the way, in the Bible, usually, it is not judgment. This is not, is it not judgment that, 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 that brings genuine repentance. These judgments are usually opportunities to say, wake up, be alert, stay awake. But usually, it is the goodness of God that really leads to repentance and not necessarily judgment. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I'm not sure we're going to go to church on Sabbath. Um, for my family and I, we are going to be staying home. And that's why at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to be doing the Sabbath school lesson, which I should have been doing tonight. But I had to do this. I had to get this off my chest. And then later on in the day, we may go live again um, with our worship. But whatever you do, um, stay safe, sanitize, um, practice um, a heightened level of hygiene. Don't be fearful. Don't be worried. Jesus did say, don't be worried. Don't be among those, the Bible says, that the that they men's heart feeling them for fear. If you're in that category, it means that you need to repent. But you must be in the category of those who will look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draw it nigh. Amen? I'm going to pray with you and pray for you before I go as we close this um, presentation tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to study your words. Thank you, Father, for the roadmap that you gave us. This roadmap helped the disciples and the apostles to escape the destruction in Jerusalem. And I pray this roadmap will help your people to be ready for your coming. That when they see you appearing in the clouds, rather than running to the rocks and to the hills, they'll be able to lift up their heads and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Have mercy upon us, dear Father. We pray for our country. Jamaica, we pray for the world. We pray for the leaders, O oh God. They are doing the best they can. Deliver us from evil, we pray. But most of all, deliver us from eternal damnation. We pray and say thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you again. God bless you, Richie. Have a wonderful Sabbath. And again, don't be like the fearful and the unbelieving, but be a believer in Christ who will recognize these things that the coming of Christ is sure. Amen. Happy Sabbath.